In this video, I'll show how you can upload a view counter in three different ways. One beginner, another intermediate, and one advanced. I know that the advanced for some people might not be advanced enough. There might also be a more complex way of doing it, which can be triggered in less DB hits. But this is just an invitation to you guys. Show me if you have a better way of, of updating this view counter by one uh, anytime a user visits that page. So the easiest and the first thing a beginner might think of when updating a counter, uh, let's say the counter is called views. They would just take that object, object.view equals object.view plus one, and then object.save. But if you try to scale that up and let's say five users visit the site at the same second, or let's say 10 or 20, or in bigger cases, let's say 100 at the same time, then you might have a issue where the initial view counter was at 10. And even the 50 people visited it at the same time, because the view counter at that time was only 10, all of them would just be changing that to 10 plus one, and then saving that. And that might result in, um, anywhere from zero to 50 view count increases, which is not something we want to happen. We want to preserve each view that we get. And that's how a beginner would update a view counter. Now, the intermediate step could be, okay, let's use a function, a database function, specifically a F function, which can take the name of the field as a value, and then you can perform addition or subtraction on it as you want. So now we replace the initial way with an F function, a database function. And this time, anytime the database makes a change, it will simply add plus one to the current view that there is in the database. So one issue with this way is though that you should take care that F assignments can persist after each dot save. So if you change something and then save and change something again and then save this plus one increase will happen two times. Now, while this does avoid race conditions, there is still the database hit that you're doing. Every time you get a request, you're doing a DB write, which is often pretty expensive once you have a large amount of users and can sometimes slow down your database query by a few milliseconds, let's say. But every time you get a request, now that is just additional load on your database, you probably don't need because you don't need a view counter to update every time you get a request. You just need to save the fact that the view counter would be updated. So now the third way, which is the advanced way, I would say, is just this is something I came up with, so somebody probably could come up with something better. Of course, what I like to do, or one of the ways I like to do the view counter problem is I will save this in a dictionary and I will use the Redis cache, which is often much less memory intensive than having to save it in the database. So what you can do is get the current cache for all views, and if you find the current object uh, by some unique identifier, then you can just increase the value of that identifiers by one. If you don't find it, then you set it to zero or one, I guess. And when you actually execute this addition, then it will be added by the amount of times it is set in that cache. So for example, say you have 10 objects, all of them cached using a dictionary value. You can then run a salary task for every five or 10 minutes or 15 or even an hour if you would like, because it just depends on how frequently you'd like the view counter to update. And chances are, if you have a large enough system, you're probably, even in your views, you're probably caching your requests. So it wouldn't even matter if the view counter doesn't update because you would be reusing a previous response, which had an old view value. Now, using that, you can run that salary task. You can go through each of those, each of the items in the 
cached dictionary and increase the value of the views by that unique identifier and then just add the amount that is the value uh, for that identifier. And I hope this was useful. And again, if you have a better way of doing this, let me know because I would like, I'm very curious about what a better way than this would be uh, that would not require over engineering something. And let me know if you have any questions about something I explained in this one and see you in the next video. Bye.